Hello? Can you? Ah, no, I mean, okay. Hi. My name is Thomas Frank. I'm from company Revolution. Uh, I have the pleasure to talk with you about uh, bulk freezing in pharmaceutical industry with only air as a refrigerant. Uh, so we're using as a work fluid air and how does it work and uh, how we do it. I will explain you in detail now in this presentation. Yeah. So basically we as the solution, we as engineering office for sustainable refrigeration. Yeah. Uh, we are based in Germany and uh, we use a lot of air refrigeration already in the last five and a half years in many different applications. Yeah. Uh, Bulk freezing for our pharmaceutical company is a very important process where they need a very controlled freezing with uh, certain freezing ramps uh, and also quite low temperatures uh, down to minus 80 or even minus 140 degrees. Well, so we talk about this in the detail. But before we talk about this, uh, our motivation as a company and uh, working on developing new processes is uh, the impact of refrigeration. So we have three pillars we look at. Uh, one topic is uh, the high energy demand. So in Germany, the numbers, but it's on the globe, uh, be quite the same. Uh, we have a lot of electrical power into uh, refrigeration equipment, so up to 19%. Uh, it's increasing a lot because heat pumps are also refrigeration machines and uh, we substitute uh, primary energy with it. And the other topic is that these machines are often not very reliable, not very long lasting. Yeah. So um, we will talk about this in the detail in a second. And another topic which you saw a lot on this trade show already, I think, is uh, we have an impact on direct emissions. So we said we want to have solutions with no impact at all. Yeah. Uh, in uh, the Europe, we have a lot of um, laws that help us in this approach, which is very important for us to establish new processes in the industry, in the pharmaceutical industry, which is very um, uh, conservative and very proven driven so they are not very open for new processes so basically you're familiar I think on this trade show with FGAS regulation also reach uh, the coming reach so it's a draft and also in Germany very important is the energy efficiency law which is on the European directive and will come in more detail uh, maybe in the presentation tomorrow. Um, how is air refrigeration working? We use uh, the Mira Intex air refrigeration machines that are built in Czech Republic. Yeah. Um, imagine this is the cold room and the machine, the major part of the machine is a turbo compressor with a turbo expander on one shaft with the motor. Very special about it is we have no oil in this machine. It's a complete speed control driven uh, machine with a segment bearing. So the shaft is flying. It has no contact with the housing. Yeah. So basically it's the machine without liquid refrigerant, without oil and without vibration. If you look into reliability of the refrigeration machine, and I think most of you are aware of this, the major failure of the refrigeration machines are exactly these three things. So none of our machines failed in the field so far. And I think that's a trend that will go on. So it's a very reliable, robust machine. How is the process working? Here, this is our freezing chamber as an example. And we want to freeze a product at minus 80. Um, our compressor is sucking the air from the chamber and compress it. We have high pressure, high temperature. In this case, we have one bar over pressure. And we have around 100 degrees plus. We have a heat sink, like always in a refrigeration machine, so we give away the heat. Yeah, um, This usually is with cold water in the pharmaceutical industry, so we have 612 cold water. So after this, we will have around 20 degrees and one bar over pressure as a high pressure. Then we go into the recuperator. You will understand in a second, I promise. Um, we have around minus 75 after the recuperator. We expand from one bar over pressure to ambient pressure with taking out the energy and recovering into compressor. And therefore we have minus 100 air going into our freezing chamber. And this air gets warmed up by the product. We have minus 80 backflow and going back into the recuperator. Plus 20, minus 80. We said we are minus 75 here. So we are around plus 15 here and going back into the compression. Very simple process. We have only one rotating equipment, and as mentioned, it's completely uh, or it's very low on wear because it has no friction and no contact with the housing and no vibration. Okay, so this is the turbo compressor expander on one shaft I showed you before. This is the process. 
So basically, uh, this machine has a lot of advantages. Uh, I have not the time in this presentation to go into all details of this. If you want to learn more, I'm happy to show you. But for ultra low temperature, it's a very efficient machine. Yeah. Um, we have also a study, a very complete study on our website for free, where you can look into efficiency values and other things. Yeah. But basically, one huge advantage of this machine, it can do one machine can do any temperature from ambient down to minus 100 in the standard. We also modified these machines down to minus 160. So they are very flexible. So if we use it for storage, we can do use the storage one day minus 80. And if Corona pandemic is over, they use it for minus 20. And if there's a no pandemic, they use it another for another temperature. This technology for a freezing process is also very good because we can also use the high temperature with a higher COP and the lower temperatures with lower COP, very flexible in the process. Um, this is a plate freezer, which we developed last year with the company of Hof. They are very known, well known in the pharmaceutical industry. So basically our engineering office usually does product development for plant manufacturing companies or consulting end customers. So this we developed last year is for plasma bags to freeze on a plate very fast in a very controlled manner. This is running since one year, basically like I explained, it's a plate freezer. So the, there is oil driven through the plates. We press the, the plasma bags to each other. So they have a certain uh, a, a form um, and freeze them. But however, there's a lot of other products in the market that you cannot freeze like that. For example, bottles. Yeah, it's a very important uh, format for the pharmaceutical industry. Also some other bulk material like um, um, special bags that are not uh, with contact uh, or not allowed for contact. You can also not freeze in here. So basically, um, last, uh, last year we developed uh, for a customer in the steel industry, we developed a blast freezer for cryogenic steel hardening. So basically it's a process where you cool down steel to minus 90 and after warm up the steel to plus 400 again to increase the strengthness of the steel. You basically use this for um, ge not gearboxes, um, Nockenwellen, I don't know the English word for it, but uh, some gear parts for trucks and also for razor blades and um, 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 uh, special ammunition to penetrate tanks and other things. You need this process. Yeah, um, We got the environmental Im impact price for this from the German government because we are 70 measured, 70% 70 more efficient than the current system. And we now modified this system for the um, pharmaceutical industry because this is for steel hardening. It's not suitable for um, GMP process in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, the evaporator is completely done. We don't need an evaporator for our process. So a normal evaporator always, especially in freezing process, the problem is you open the door, you get introduce a lot of uh, humidity over the ambient ice. This freezes on the coldest spot. That's your evaporator. So at a certain point, it's completely blocked and you need to defrost. Um, without, and therefore, you need a lot of energy to get the water melted out of your cold room um, so uh, average number is about 70% is going into the cold room, 30% you bind in the water going out. Yes, there are penthouse coolers and other things that are better than this, but still at the end, when you defrost, you inject a lot of heat into your cold room or your freezer, or your freezer is not able to operate in this moment where you need it. Um, we use a complete different technology to remove this humidity. Yeah. So basically, we have a snow catcher. This is uh, developed by Mirai Intex. Um, it's two filter cartridges that suck the air, like we described in our process, through these filters. The filter get blocked over time because they collect CO2 on these temperatures and ice particles and dirt. And if they're blocked with their own compressor, we build up a pressure over pressure from one bar and we can counter flow these filters. And then there is a spin, they get long, and all the dirt ice falls into a chain drive, and we move it out to ambient to let it melt, so we don't need heaters in the cold room. All these technologies we brought together to have also a perfect product handling. So basically, also on a, a cold insulated blast freezer, you have a, a certain um, hive for the insulation of the ground. Yes, you can make a pit, but then you lose the flexibility of moving it in the factories. Usually the customers want to have it on a steel frame. 
Um, so basically, you see here a, a, a Horden wagon uh, to introduce this in, in, into the cold freezer to bring in the uh, product. And you see also our product is able to handle pellets and all other materials to directly bulk freeze a big amount of um, um, product. Yeah. And here you see the final product. Yeah. So this is uh, our new blast freezer. So basically what you see on the back on the steel frame, there is the air refrigeration machine. So the, the GBP is zero. We have only air as a refrigerant. Yeah. It's uh, very efficient for ultra low temperature. You see here is the control panel for the operator where he can give in recipes for different cool down ramps. In, in pharmaceutical industry, it's very important to have a controlled cool down. So also not too fast. So you have uh, different products, for example, cells, where if you freeze too slow, the ice crystals grow through the cell membrane and destroy your product. If you freeze too, too fast, you can get too much water out of your product and also other issues. So it's very important to have a control. So our machine is complete speed controlled um, and can make a, a dynamic cool down. And with different recipes, you can save your recipes for different products. Also in a GMP environment with a complete logging system. Yeah, um, this is a, a further development of this product. Um, it's with a, a separation of the air cycle. I showed you a machine that sucks the air from the chamber, has no evaporator and brings it back. Uh, however, in pharmaceutical industry, there's also a demand on freezing and clean room environment. Yeah. So clean room environment, you don't want to suck the clean room air through your refrigeration machine. Um, there we have also the possibility to do an uh, indirect system, which is less efficient on, on uh, working uh, parameters, so needs more power for the same result. However, it can save more energy because you can bound energy in the oil and make faster cool down ramps. So it's like always, it's not one size fits all. There are different modifications to these products. Like always, we work with um, a, a modular attempt. So we have different parts that are the same. Here, for example, obviously the chamber and the fan are the same. So you see there is a very powerful ultra low temperature fan, which we already tested down to minus 140, which can do 3000 cubics per hour on minus uh, 80. Yeah. Um, and also the, the steel frame and everything is the same, but we modular then, for example, the refrigeration machine or also the Hordenwagen to the attempts what the customer needs. Oh, sure. Yeah, so that was quick and dirty what we developed here. Um, the machine, you, this machine, the blade freezer with air, integrated air refrigeration, you can already visit. Yeah, we can arrange a visit, you can see live. Also can test your products on the real machine. Yeah, we do a lot of um, uh, 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 product testing with distant customers, so they see before they buy the machine how is the machine in performance and also consumption. Uh, I always tell our customer if you buy a fancy car, you also will test drive before you buy a machine. So we have the same philosophy. Um, this machine will be ready for testing in uh, end of November. Yeah, um, but we can already do tests what we already did in our steel hardening system that is very similar in the modification of the pharmaceutical from the performance of freezing. It's just not uh, optimized for GMP environment and uh, also GMP cleaning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That was my presentation. If you have more questions, I'm happy if you have answers uh, questions now or visit us on the booth. Any questions? Okay, thank you.